I now recognize Mr. Mfume from Maryland for five minutes of questions. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you and the ranking member for convening us on this very important and, and difficult topic, one that all Americans, regardless of where they live, regardless of what they do, are concerned about. And I had come to this hearing expecting, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we would find a way to peel off the things that didn't matter so that we could get to the things that did matter, whether it was a lab leak or infection through animals. I think we've got to pursue both of those paths if we are ever to get the truth. However, I must go back to what my ranking member said, that I am a bit appalled that this hearing now gets layered over with the issue of race in a very strong way with the presence of Mr. Wade. And Mr. Wade, I have read your book, and I'm appalled by it. And I would hope that giving you this platform does not paint or taint the issue that we're trying to get to and deal with here. You're not a physician. You're not a physician's assistant. You're not a scientist. You've never done a peer-reviewed paper, and yet you've got an opinion, which is fine, except that it's steeped in this conspiracy theory that somehow or another minorities are so genetically uh, in, uh, different uh, that they are culpable in some sort of way. And I, I just, I don't, I don't like that at all. Um, in your book, The Troublesome Inheritance, you talk about a number of different things, and, and David Duke talks about it, and says that he really endorses your position on blacks and Jews. The book was championed by the infamous white supremacists, Jared Taylor, John Demetriar, and Steve Saylor. The book has been promoted on a neo-Nazi forum that is linked to almost 100 racially motivated attempted murders over the last five years. And it troubles me that, and I'm gonna ask unanimous consent, Mr. Chairman, that the New York Times piece for which you wrote actually said that your theory has come off at the wheels, particularly when you talk about East Asians and their genetic makeup. I'd like to ask that the David Duke statement and the copy from his website be entered into the record. And I'd like that the Southern Poverty Law Center, which tracks these things annually, uh, and their assessment, which is similar, be added to the record. Without objection. Um, now, I gotta tell you, I spent five terms in this body, I was so troubled by what I saw in the streets with bias and hate crimes that I actually gave up my seat in the Congress. And I went back to work in community groups. I ended up being the president of the NAACP so that nationally I could work against this sort of thing. It is repulsive. And so here I am back again, hearing the issues that drove me out of here to begin with, and I don't want to take away from this hearing. I don't want to take away from what I said earlier that we've got to go down both paths. But it just burns me that I would know that I'm doing that on a forum where somebody with these sort of beliefs uh, is also a part of. Mr. Arward, I want to go to you for a minute. I know you don't represent Johns Hopkins. You're representing uh, uh, the Association on Infection Diseases. I have a lot of- uh, Excuse me, sir. Do I get a chance to respond briefly? It's my time. No, you do not. I know. No, you do not. Okay. I have a lot of respect for Hopkins. I spent 10 years on the board of trustees there. I'm a graduate of the institution, uh, and I know that you speak with a great deal of background, and even though in this instance you're speaking on the Association of Infectious Diseases, I take all of that very seriously. Um, and I wanna just say one, ask you one quick thing here about going down both of these paths. And how much can you say in a short period of time does the information obtained through this hearing and other hearings and the intelligence community, how very important is that to bolstering the efforts to prepare for any future pandemics? Well, I think obviously getting to the origins is on everyone's minds, but also understanding what happened should also help prepare us for moving ahead. And I can't under, um, overstate the needs in our public health, which 
um, uh, have been generally less well funded uh, than other measures and other diseases to help protect Thank our country. Thank you. I've got to reclaim the little bit of time I have left. Uh, and Mr. Wade, let me just say this personally, for a race of people who have suffered, endured, and survived three centuries of slavery, oppression, deprivation, degradation, denial, and disprivilege. I'm absolutely offended that you would have the opportunity to take this platform and to add anything of significance to it. I yield back. Well, I don't have anything in common but, with the views Mr. of Mr. Wade, white supremacists. Mr. Wade, hold on a second. Uh, I do think that uh, Mr. Wade deserves the opportunity to take two minutes to respond to the accusations made, but I do want to get back to the topic at hand, which is the origins of COVID-19. Uh, thank, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry for this uh, distraction from the work of the committee. I'm sorry, too, that Mr. Fusi did not like my book. Uh, I am not a racist. I don't have anything in common with the views of white supremacists. Just because They love you, though. Just because David Duke likes my book. All of them as, love you. I mean, maybe he likes Beethoven, Mr. Mpuma, too. Mr. would you please let him respond? He did not interrupt you. I didn't know that he got time to respond. It, Chairman's it seems a not very good argument that David Duke likes my book. He Maybe he likes many things. That doesn't mean to say they're all wrong. I did not write my book for him. I also like to make the clearest possible distinction between writing about the biology of race, which is a purely scientific issue, and, and racist statements with which I have absolutely no sympathy. My book is explicitly anti-racist. I stress the fact that we are all variations on the same human genome, which I think is a very important and unifying um, fact. I, I, I think the arguments made against the book were, were for entirely political reasons. As, uh, my Irish member referred to the 120 scientists who attacked my book in science. Well, there's a, a nice story about Einstein that someone told him that 100 scientists had written a book saying he was wrong, and he replied, well, if I were wrong, one would have been enough. That's how science works, not on the number of people against it. It works on facts. And, and those letter writers had no good point to no mistake in my book, so I don't think their uh, criticism should be taken carefully. Um, I'm, I'm sorry for the disruption and, and unhappiness this issue has caused, and uh, uh, let's get back to the issue of the, of the hearing, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I now recognize.